Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice system of equations from Arbolos. What is Arbolos? It's a math journal by American Mathematics Competitions uh, produced for pre-college philomaths. Beautiful, beautiful journal with lots of interesting problems. And this problem is taken from there. Even though I've seen this problem in many other occasions, some math competitions somewhere, I can't exactly remember, but uh, anyways, what does Arbolos mean? Arbolos is basically in geometry, a plane region bounded by three semicircles with three apexes such that each corner of each semicircle is shared. Come on, what are you talking about? Okay, anyways, that's just the Wikipedia definition. You can go ahead and check it out. And it's spelled as such. So let me go ahead and write it down so you can kind of look it up if you want. Anyways, we have this system, a squared equals two times the quantity b plus c, and a cubed minus b cubed minus c cubed is equal to three a b c. If you don't know some algebraic identities or some other arguments we're going to talk about, then this problem will be extremely difficult. Because I remember when I was teaching a few years ago, I came across this problem and I couldn't solve it. I mean, I haven't really tried, like I didn't make a attempt like maybe a sincere attempt but anyways maybe i couldn't have solved it at the time but now i'll be presenting you with two solutions all right let's go ahead and take a look at the second method first because the second method is very algebraic and i don't want to say it's my favorite you'll get to decide so i don't want to bias you so let's start with the second method and we haven't started with the second method for a while so i think that would be good to revisit that concept so I'm going to start with the second equation, even though in the original problem statement, I think this is the first. Anyways, I'll start with the cubics. So a cubed minus b cubed minus c cubed is equal to 3abc, but I'm going to put everything on the same side because I'd like to get zero on one side. Now, this expression is factorable. Can you believe that? Why? Let me tell you. There's actually a nicer form of this, which with slight modifications you can get this but here's the original version x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is factorable and one of the factors is x plus y plus z this is a pretty interesting identity because i've seen quite a few uh, challenging problems using this identity and i think it's beautiful and i made quite a few problems too you could probably check them out and if i am able to find them i'll try to share some links so if anybody knows uh, some of identity some of the identities that we uh, use this problem in uh, or some of the videos please share with us and let us know uh, by the way the identity the expression on the left hand side can also be used uh, to prove the uh, what's it called uh, the amgm inequality for three variables uh, in this case we're not necessarily saying wait a minute we are saying that a, b, c are natural numbers. Okay, the problem statement says that. I forgot to say it. Apologize. a, b, c are positive integers or natural numbers. We say positive integers. It's safer to say because some countries, unfortunately, uh, think that zero is a natural number. Uh, in the U.S., it's not. And in many countries, it's not. I believe there's a couple countries. I don't want to name them. I don't want to shame them, right? Anyways, so the right-hand side is going to be made up of x plus y plus z. And then the other factor, obviously, you can guess it's going to be quadratic like this. And then we're going to subtract x, y, x, z, and y, z. Now, the second factor on the right can also be written as a sum of, two, uh, sum of three squares, which means this expression is always going to be less than or equal to zero. And when is it equal to zero? When x, y, z are all equal. Make sense? Okay. So having said that, we can now set expression equal to zero. And from here, we get the following. Since the second expression cannot be zero, we already talked about it, right? So the first one needs to be zero. Great. But how do you factor this using that identity? That's what matters, right? Let's go ahead and do that right here. So this expression right here can be factored into a minus b minus c. So here's what you need to do. Replace uh, y with negative b and z with negative c. Make sense? y with negative b and z with negative c. Okay, I'm going to have to erase it. Sorry about that because I need room. Now, a minus b minus c is one of the factors. The other factor is just going to be a squared plus b squared plus c squared. The squares are not going to change. Uh, and then a, b, a, c, these two terms will turn into a plus sign because they're both negative. And then I think uh, the last one is going to be still minus sign. 
like this. And again, it doesn't matter because this expression cannot be zero. This has to be zero. And it's beautiful because that gives us a lot of information. A minus B minus C equals zero means A is equal to B plus C. Now, this is valuable because if you look at the system, the first equation gave us A squared equals two times the quantity B plus C. Now, these together, these two together actually make up a really nice system because you can do something like this, right? We can basically use substitution, can't we? Uh, since A is equal to B plus C, why don't we go ahead and square both sides and we're going to get B plus C quantity squared, which is B squared plus C squared plus 2BC, which is equal to 2B plus 2C. Wait a minute. Is this going to help? It's kind of confusing. I don't think we need this. We can do a better job. Why not isolate B plus C from both of these equations? This first one already has it. From the second equation, B plus C is half of A squared, and then that is equal to A which is beautiful because from here we get a squared equals 2a, right? And this means a is equal to 2. Why? Because a can't be 0. Remember, we're dealing with positive integers. Beautiful. We found a. The rest would be fairly easy. If a is equal to 2, then you can go ahead and plug it into the second, I mean the first equation, because if you plug it into the second you're going to get a cubic expression, and you're going to have to deal with that. I don't think it's going to be too hard, but you will have to use other things, such as b plus c is equal to 2. Let's just do it this way. Uh, using the first equation is easier. What was the first equation? a squared equals 2 times b plus c. a, a is equal to 2, so a squared is equal to 4, which means b plus c is equal to 2. Awesome. You could also use another expression, but anyways, a is equal to b plus c, right? So... What does that mean? Uh, if B and C are positive integers, their sum is 2, then they both have to be 1. So A is equal to 2, B and C are both equal to 1, and that basically solves the problem. But this only brings us to the end of the second method. Wait a minute, did you do the first method? No, not yet. We're going to do the first method second, and trust me, it's still considered the first method. Okay? Now, if you consider this, let me switch these around this time so that it kind of looks different, right? Okay, so now A and B are positive integers again. Now, one thing I want you to notice here, which is super important from the second equation, we notice that A squared is even. We're going to use some parity arguments here, which is very powerful, by the way. Uh, since A squared is even, A is also even. Also notice that A is greater than B and A is greater than C. How do we know that? Look at the equations. Hopefully, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. And this is nice because if you put these two together and add them, this gives you 2A is greater than B plus C. Hmm, that's interesting. What does that mean? How can I use that information? Here's what you can do. From the original equation, we can basically write half of A squared. And again, we used that idea before, remember? Half of A squared is equal to B plus C. And B plus C is less than 2A. Now forget about the B plus C in the middle and directly use these two things. Obviously, we have this interesting transitive property or substitution, whatever. A squared over 2 is less than 2A, which means A squared is less than 4A. But what does that mean? It just means A squared minus 4A is less than 0. A times A minus 4 is less than 0. And this just means that if you make a table, I usually do, you're going to have an a here and a times a minus 4 here. You're going to have a plus sign and a minus sign and a plus sign. Notice that we're looking for the negative area. So a needs to be between 0 and 4. We know that a is a positive integer anyways. That doesn't matter. A needs to be less than 4, which means a can be 1, 2, or 3. Beautiful. But a is even, so a can only be 2. Nice. That brings us basically to the same point. a is 2, b is equal to c is equal to 1, and... This brings us to the end, almost, but we asked Wolfram Alpha, and let's give Wolfram Alpha some credit this time. Sometimes Wolfram Alpha cannot solve a problem, and I don't know why people are offended when I say something like, okay, AI cannot do it, this problem at this point. It's a language model, fine, you can talk to it, it'll answer questions, but some problems it cannot solve, okay? Let's just accept that. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.